Hello there, my fellow degenerate nobles, and welcome back to some more Dune lore. Today we're gonna make another addition to our sub-series focusing on famous characters of Dune. However, this might be the first time we're gonna cover not one, but two characters in one episode. If you're wondering why that is, while these two characters are quite popular and well-known, they don't really have that much lore behind them. Also, they are related, so maybe doing them in one video is proper. So, without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about Fade Raufa and Glossura Ban, the younger scions of House Harkonnen. And because he's the younger one, let us start with Fade Raufa. This guy was the son of Abilard Raban and his concubine Tora Raban, grandson of the Bashar Gunseng Harkonnen and nephew of the dreaded Baron Vladimir. It is known that Fade Raufa was only a piece in the genetic pattern created by the Bene Gesserit, whose intention was to breed him with the daughter of the Duke Leto Atreides and the concubine Lady Jessica, and thus create their mighty Kwisatz Haderach. Lady Jessica famously though would disobey the orders of the Bene Gesserit and have a son instead, forever closing off the possibility of that union. The entire genetic pattern of Fade is still unknown. However, the discovery of a part of a monograph concerning the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, found in Rydulian crystals, does shed some light on the possibilities of Fade Raufa's ancestry. The Baron chose Fade Raufa and his older brother Glossu to become members of his household, when a directive of the Bene Gesserit indicated that one of them would display the manipulative military genius of the Baron's idol, the Emperor Avalard XVII. This Avalard kept a number of trained concubines in his court, and one of which was a member of the Bene Gesserit who would bore Avalard his only daughter, the Lady Kai Seran, who would also be trained by the Bene Gesserit. For the next two centuries, every female descendant of the original union between Avalard and his concubine became a member of the Bene Gesserit, including two that became even reverend mothers. One of the daughters, the Lady Teresa Dugate, married Emperor Joseph VII. This Joseph was in fact so well trained by his wife in the ways of the Bene Gesserit that a popular joke during their reign referred to them as our reverend father and mother. Together they perfected such a ruthless manipulation of their subjects using Bene Gesserit techniques that supposedly the wealth produced during their reign had never been equaled. The monograph assumes that this union and that of Avalard and his Bene Gesserit concubine were of major interest to Vladimir Harkonnen in his adoption of his nephews into the household. Maybe the Baron concluded that the boys were direct line descendants of Avalard and two centuries of Bene Gesserit interference. The Baron had wanted to see Fade Raufa put on the throne. From his earliest days in the Baron household, Fade Raufa was trained in the sophistry and intricacy of man to man combat, including unorthodox techniques to kill his own sparring partners. But maybe the most one-sided thing he was ever taught was to hate House Atreides. One of the best documented events of Fade Raufa's short life was his 17th birthday celebration, where he would kill his 100th gladiator in the family games. The killing of the slave typified Fade Raufa's disobedience to all the rules and guidelines established for fair play in combat. To stoke his own ego, Fade Raufa conspired with the Baron's Mentat to alter this combat. While it was a tradition to drug the slave, this time that was not done. Also traditional was the wearing of a white glove on the hand that held a poison knife, and a black glove on the hand that didn't, and Fade Raufa reversed these. Additionally, the slave was conditioned to respond to a word signal that would render him helpless. What made the event remarkable was that in spite of all the disadvantages, the slave nearly killed him. And this was probably the closest to a fair fight Fade Rafa had ever done. It is believed that Fade learned more than perverse skills in his uncle's house though. Thanks to the Baron's careful teachings, Fade ended up hating Paul Atreides more than anything else in the universe. There is even some evidence to suggest that this animosity was exacerbated by the Baron's supposed attraction to Paul. 
It was this ingrained hatred that goaded Fedorova to challenge Paul to a duel following the emotionally charged confrontation between Paul and the Emperor upon the Emperor's failure to take over Arrakis. Both young men had been trained extensively in various methods of combat, with Fade additionally trained to be ruthless and take advantage of every trick in the book. Paul had been taught to be aware of the tricks, but this sense of integrity would not allow him to use any himself. Although he knew that Fade's training had included sensitivity to a code word that would render him momentarily weak, Paul did not use the word, even when he saw that Fade Rafa intended to kill him with a poison needle. In the course of their duel, Paul took advantage of the projecting needle, immobilized Fade against the floor, and drove the tip of the blade through Fade's jaw and into his brain. And thus, at a young age of 19, Fade Rafa died as ignobly as he had lived. In addition to these references, insight into the personality of Fader of Harkonnen can be obtained from a reading of Hark al Harba's play Shaddam IV, in which Fader of plays a major character. Although that is a work of fiction, within the fiction, the play offers what many consider to be valid historical and psychological revelations concerning the life and personality of what was, at the end of the day, a badly used and abused young man. Which brings us to the second and older Harkonnen, Count Glossuraban. This guy was the Siridar regent of the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen on Arrakis during the period that House Harkonnen held it as a fief. He was also the son of Abulard, Vladimir's youngest demi-brother. Glossus' regency on Arrakis was famous for its cruel suppression of the natives, which earned him the nickname the Beast Raban. Glossus' father, Abulard, was the product of Gunseng Harkonnen and Gunella Sorvag. Of the children of concubines, only Abulard survived to the deadly political climate on the royal palace of Harko. Once Vladimir was pronounced as the Na Baron, Abulard renounced the Harkonnen name and all the rights to the title, in exchange for the sub-district governorship of Raban Lankivale. He really had no choice though. Gunseg wished a clear and undisputed succession, and Abilard was no competition for Vladimir. While Count of Raban Lankivale, Abilard took as concubine one Tora Raban, daughter of Elson Raban, a minor house ruler. She would bear him two sons, Glossu and Feidraufa. Feidraufa's talents made him na baron of Gidi Prime, but even so, Glossu won a name for himself even if it was an infamous one. Physically, he was stocky of build, with the Harkonnen paternal lines narrow-set eyes, and as slow-witted as he was thuggish. What he lacked in the smarts, he more than made up for in crude power of will. Once he set his mind on something, he would do so with tenacity, but no style or subtlety. He delighted in crushing his opponents with sheer power, but above all else, he obeyed his orders, having little personal ambition. Such a character would definitely appeal to Vladimir when he was awarded the melange riches of Arrakis. The Baron had great ambitions for this financial coup, a directorship of Chome, and the defeat of the hated House Atreides. Vladimir had too many pokers in the fire at the time, however, to administer to Arrakis himself, and Fade Rafa was too young at the time to do that but Glossu was willing, available, and trustworthy. Consequently, when Glossu was turned into Siridar regent of Arrakis, his orders were to produce high yields of melange with the lowest possible overhead, to squeeze the planet's population and economy. In addition, his success would also be measured by how much spice he could stuff in the secret Harkonnen caches. Raban was the Baron's steamroller. The native population of Arrakis became a slave labor force. But as repression continued, more and more of them either plotted rebellion or fled into the desert. And with each instance of sabotage, real or imagined, Glossu increased the number of executions. By these techniques, the general population was eventually cowed. At the same time, the dungeons of Carfag became the central symbol of evil as they continually swallowed anyone even remotely associated with any anti-Harkonnen propaganda. Meanwhile, the natives of Arrakis worked reluctantly for the minimal wage, 
and neglected the maintenance of spice production equipment. The major cost of the repression would be the number of Fremen who fled into the desert. The beast Raban could not reach them there, nor could he survey their activity because the guild refused to survey the southern pole of Dune. Invariably, any Harkonnen expedition sent there were wiped out. The Fremen enclaves remained outside his control, resulting in the revolution which would be undertaken by Paul Muad'Dib. The cruelty of Raban is usually attributed to House Harkonnen itself, whose genetic constitution over the centuries acquired a sadistic nature. But this cause fails to perceive Count Glossu as an individual in his own time. Much of his bullying was probably the result of a sibling rivalry between him and the younger and more intelligent Fade Raufa. He was an older brother passed over for approval, and these will often turn bitter, especially if the reason for the preference is sound. Following the defeat of the Duke Leto and Glossus' restoration as Siridar regent, he would squeeze Arrakis even harder, not only for personal relish, but to gain favor with his uncle. He was a man with something to prove. Even though Faderafa would be the Baron, Glossu thought he could advance his own fortune by surpassing his previous history of ruthlessness. Little did he know that this brutality was exactly what Vladimir wanted, before deposing him and replacing him with Fader Alpha, who would be treated as the savior. Unfortunately for all of them, the schemes of Vladimir were broken. Before the destruction of the shield wall protecting Arakin, Glosso had been sent to review the perimeter of the Harkonnen forces around the city, and there he was killed at the onslaught of sandworm riders storming through the bridge. In spite of his reputation for ferocity, Glossu Raban will go down in history as a mere tool, used at every conceivable turn by the Baron. He might feel better though if he knew that both Fade and the Baron would die shortly after him. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the infamous Beast Raban and the handsome but cruel Fade Raufa for today. Definitely some flashy characters, but unfortunately they're pretty much gone by the end of the first book. Fade was probably made more famous by the fact that he was played by a young Sting in the David Lynch movie. What about you though? Are you a fan of either of these characters? Do share your thoughts or questions on them or any other info you may know in the comments below. At the end of the day I think that both were just tools in the hands of the Baron. If you enjoyed the episode or found it informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons to support the series. Thank you very much for watching and the blessings of Shai Hulud be upon you.